you friends, it's Andrea from Prairie Sky DIY, your Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Manitoba, Canada. Today we are creating this card. Now the inspiration for this card came from a technique that I saw on another um, Facebook page and I really loved the idea um, and I wanted to put my own spin on it. So this is sort of the reverse of a spotlight technique. Spotlight technique typically has um, your piece with a black piece underneath of it. The background is usually white with just the highlighted area colored. But we're going to be doing several different techniques with this one. I promise you it might look overwhelming, but it really isn't when you break it down step by step. And it really is quite easy and quite achievable by any level of crafter. So let's go over, um, I'll explain what I did with this card and then I'll show you how we're going to switch it up for the one we're going to make today. So I used a punch to punch out our shape. I used um, painted poppies as our stamp set. The background I did with crushed curry pumpkin pie and a little bit of flirty flamingo. And then I punched, uh, before I colored the background, um, I punched out a few flower pieces and I colored them in with Stampin' Blends. Now we're going to achieve the same look, but today we are using Celebrate Sunflowers. Um, our background is going to be done in blues. And I've got a little bit of Hues of Happiness designer series paper that we're going to be using and instead of the punch, I am using the layering circles dies for this one. So the first thing that we need to do is stamp out our sunflower. Um, I'm going to be doing it in memento because I will be coloring the majority, or not the majority, I will be coloring part of it with our blends and we do need memento for that. Um, so I'm just going to ink and stamp several of the sunflowers. I'm not sure why. I closed that and we're just going to have them go several different ways. Um, I'm just going to grab a scrap so I can stamp off at the edge as well. Do one here and I'm just sort of whatever, wherever you can stamp as many or as little as you want. I kind of prefer odd numbers. So there, I am going to call that done. Close up our ink. Now I am going to be using the Big Boss, uh, the big or cut and emboss machine, but I'm going to decide which circles. Now, the good thing about using circle pieces is you can create with the different sizes. So you don't have to have all of your circles the same. And then I'll do one, maybe not to like that. Maybe I'll do that. And then there, now this will shift um, as I'm getting things ready to go through our embossing machine. So I'll move these guys off to the side. Grab our big boss. <coughs> Oops, sorry about that. Now we're gonna grab our plates. Um, the embossing plates have the sandwich that you need. So I'm gonna need our big plate, plate number one for the thin dies. Mine's a little bit waffled because it's been so well loved and used. Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of set this up again. There, and then we'll do this one that's mostly like that. Back this out a bit. These are brand new, I just took them under the package. So there will be pops and cracks, and I'm not gonna worry too much about it shifting. There's pop one, pop two, and pop three. So we know we're through. Pull everything out. Oops, put this guy down. All right. 
lovely little bits of static keeping everything where they should be. Now I am going to put these back before they vanish. I don't know, little bits and bobs always tend to, or they at least seem to evaporate. So I'm gonna bring in our scrap again. And actually, I'm gonna bring in a bigger piece of scrap when we go to do our background. Okay, so colors. I've got the SU-400, which is one of the neutrals. And we're just gonna do the center of our sunflower. When I'm doing something that has um, when I'm using the same color multiple times, I just like to get that color done and dealt with. Okay. Oops, missed this guy. I don't know about you, but when I am coloring, nine times out of ten, I miss at least one spot. So I'm going to go through with the light... I've got So Saffron and Daffodil Delight here. So I'm going to do some with So Saffron. And then I'm going to add some highlights on a couple of our flowers with um, Pumpkin Pie. So just quick little coloring job here. Not sure why I decided to use the brush end today. I usually use the point, <clears throat> the writing end. There, that's better. A little bit more control. One of my snoopervisors is fast asleep on the floor here, so you might start to hear her snore. When you store your blends, it is really important to. Um, to remember that they should be stored flat so that the ink disperses equally so one end doesn't dry out before the other. Okay. Just about done. And you can cut out as many pieces or as few pieces as you want. Dirty coloring job here. I really do love coloring with Stampin' Blends. They make it so quick and easy. If you haven't colored with alcohol markers before, it's a really fun way to add color. And I love it um, because most of the time when I'm stamping um, and coloring, I am doing so with Memento and it's just easier to color with the blends. Um, some of the water-based mediums will make, there we go. Uh, some of the water-based water mediums like the markers and the watercolor pencils will actually make the Memento Bleed. And the last thing that you want is a smudgy look. Well, I mean, it depends on what you're doing. I kind of like that rough and ready distressed look sometimes. But this way, this one's really fun to do. I'm just gonna do a little bit more in the center. And I am gonna go back <clears throat> over with our blend because that's exactly what they do. They blend the colors together. This is our So Saffron again. We're just going to go ahead. I'm 
and each time you add color, the darker it gets. You don't wanna to add too much though because um, at some point it will start to bleed a little bit over the edges, which is why I'm not going right up to the edge of our flower. So I might go over a little bit with, I don't know, maybe we'll see. I do want one that's a little bit lighter and a little bit different. All right, so we're done this part. I'm just gonna put these guys off to the side here. We're gonna bring in our scrap. Oh, and I blend this container over here. And then our ink colors, um, our blending brush, and I've got Starry Sky, Tahitian Tide, and a little bit of Pacific Point. Um, I'm gonna start lightest color to darkest. Now, when you're using the blending brushes, um, I like to go a little bit more side to side um, just because it helps prevent that harsh line of when you start to go. And I also like to start a little bit off the paper um, so that I can see how much ink A I have on my brush and then B so I know the pressure that I need to avoid that side to side line. And then as you're going, you can kind of add a little bit more pressure to get a little bit more coverage. Um, I'm not too worried if I get smears or creases because when I posted this card on my Facebook page, um, I called it the wonder card because as I was doing things um, and I was creating or trying to recreate the look of the card that I saw, um, oh, I wonder what would happen if I did this or I wonder if this would work, which is how I craft a lot of the time. Um, I like to say I make the mistakes and try to figure it out so you don't have to. Um, and if you ever do wonder if something is or isn't going to work, all you need to do is pop me a question and I will be more than happy to help you out. Because chances are, I have wondered those very same questions myself. Okay, and then we're just gonna bring in <clears throat> the starry sky as just the tiniest little hint of color. Um, one of the reasons too that I go dark, lightest to darkest is if there's any ink transfer, it's less noticeable if you get light ink on a dark ink pad. It's definitely more noticeable if that dark ink hits the light ink. Um, and I've just posted recently a couple of videos over on my YouTube channel on what to do if you're re-inking and you mess up and grab the wrong color because I'm pretty sure every crafter at some point has done that. Okay, so we've got, I think, enough coverage here. I'm just gonna close this guy up. Now, when I did our sample card here, um, I actually rinsed this out underwater first, but I don't have running water in my craft room, so I just have a little bowl and I'm just gonna give it a rinse. I'm not worried if all of the ink doesn't come out, um, but it does come out pretty cleanly. And then I just have a little towel. I'm just going to give it a squeeze because I want it a little damp, but I don't want it soaked and saturated because I don't want it to really um, wet my cardstock. So it's a little bit damp, you can tell, because the bristles are a little bit separated. And all we're going to do is go over and blend the colors in. And you can see the Tahitian Tide is really starting to pop with the blue. I love how the colors change slightly when you add a little bit of water to it. Now, if you wanted to, you could get a little bit heavier handed um, and add some droplets of water to completely change the look as well. But I'm gonna call this one done. And then I'm just gonna trim it a tiny little bit so that I can use um, a 
Oh, the name of the paper is escaping me for a second. Um, so that I can use our Use of Happiness, there we go, um, designer series paper as our background, just for a little bit of an extra pop. Okay, I'm going to go this way, actually. All right. Now, you can make a choice at this point. You can either use your adhesive um, to add your flowers back so that your card lays completely flat, or you can choose to have some dimension um, and use your dimensionals. I am going to use dimensionals for mine. I really like the extra little added pop that it gave. Now I am adding a little bit more adhesive than I normally would um, just around the holes. And then we're going to put roughly centered. So lay that flat. Then I've got some mini dimensionals left over from a paper pumpkin kit. And I'm going to do three or four for each of our circles. Now, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, if you've been, if you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Um, I do try to post crafty goodness a few times a week. Okay, and then we're just going to line up our circles so that it completes our image. I'm just going to pull off each of the backs. Oops. And if you do like what you see too, please share with your family and friends who either love to craft or are crafters themselves. Okay, and that one goes there. This guy goes here, except not that way. Oh no, that was right. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, there we go do our big one and really if you wanted to do another shape other than circles you absolutely could whatever you think is going to work for your project and what you would like is the absolute right choice to make okay and I kind of like to place it so oops I like to make sure that it's roughly where it needs to be before I commit and press. So this technique is really fun and really different. Um, and you can use as many or as few tools as you need and as you have. So you wanna use a different kind of coloring method, absolutely. Um, you wanna add a little bit of bling, which is what I did on our sample card with Wink of Stella. Um, I just added a little bit in the white areas just so that it had a little bit more shimmer and shine. You can add bling, you can add ribbon, you can add a sentiment. Um, really, there is no right or wrong with this method, and it's all about having fun, experimenting, and customizing. This does work, I think, probably better with large line images that are easier to color. Um, something intricate and fussy might be a little bit harder to position, but I would absolutely give it a shot and see what you can come up with for this one. Um, where did that little scrap go? Hmm. Okay, I had a teeny tiny scrap left over, but it seems to have vanished off my desk. Um, I was going to put our sentiment on it. So I will add, it's just, or just a note, um, when I find that piece, because it was the perfect size. Yeah, it's vanished into thin air. As does stuff happen quite frequently in this craft room. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you hanging out with me for a little while and spending some of your day um, enjoying some crafty goodness. I will see you again really soon. Thanks for watching.